Hello, my name is Gustavo Espinosa and this presentation is based on the simulation which is an authentic assessment type. This presentation is going to focus on the student voice uh, based on the experience in the model that I have been teaching in the business school and another paper that I have I found. Well, th this is basically uh, a reminder of what we discussed before in the other presentation about the BK601 strategic perspectives. We mentioned it's uh, for level 6 students, it's a group uh, coursework. Also, we mentioned before that we provide some feedback after, after the weekly decisions that students submit. Also, we there are six different marking criteria we, and it's linked to uh, another assessment which is an individual reflective report. Now, I'm going to mention the student voice. Uh, in week 12, I asked some of the students who attended uh, in semester two. We have to remember that this module uh, runs for two for two semesters. So in semester two, in week 12, I asked the students uh, who attended if they can provide some feedback. I created uh, three different padlets, depends of when what I had these this simulation classes. And the questions was related to if they feel that the simulation prepared them for a real work environment. They can also make comments about uh, the skills that they have developed during the simulation and what they did not didn't like about the simulation game. So here in each of uh, uh, in each of these links, we I created this this a uh, padlet. I try to divide it in the left hand side the positive feedback about the simulation and in the right hand side actually the the feedback for improvement or a feedback that uh, contains positive and feedback for improvement. This is for one particular class. This is another one which actually have more feedback with positive feedback, feedback that uh, contains both type of feedback and then the other one is feedback just for improvement. This is the third one. Again, left hand side positive feedback the middle one contains both type of feedback and here is just feedback for improvement well at the end i analyze this all this feedback and based on the satisfaction uh, 44 percent 54 percent of the report of the respondents they enjoy it meanwhile 20 percent didn't like it and one student actually recommended to use it in any in different modules uh, talking about level six students huh? Some skills that they feel they develop was related with team working, communication, flexibility, and negotiation. And other ones were related with leadership, work under pressure, critical analysis. It's very interesting, but nobody mentioned about a uh, strategy. Nobody mentioned about taking decisions related with marketing or engineering or human resources. Most of them were related with soft skills that they develop. Uh, then, when I asked related if they think these skills can prepare them for the future after graduation, 23 of them agree and the other 23 disagree with that. Okay, and there was no more responses from, from, from the students. Related with assessment design and structure, uh, there were not, there were some a few uh, responses in this criteria. 12% of the respondents found that the structure should be improved. But it was not very clear what exactly have to be improved. Uh, some of them, they identified there was a, a scarce link between the seminars and the lectures related to the simulation game. Uh, other ones, one comment said, well, uh, this should be individual because there was different type of group dynamics. Some of them, maybe some groups, they only have to take one decision. Maybe uh, only one person took the decisions and the other ones didn't uh, contribute too much. 8% uh, were satisfied with the teaching and feedback they received, but also the same a percentage also said that they, they should receive clear feedback, okay, and we should repeat the instructions that it was provided in the guidance. This could be also related that maybe some of them they didn't read it, or maybe they didn't understand actually the, uh, the information in the guidance. Um, one very interesting comment somebody mentioned like the feedback that they receive every week they identify that contradicts the results actually 
So it was very interesting the, the, the feedback. I think maybe one point from here also is related that some students didn't like it to, to work in groups. Maybe something that we need to consider is if there is a way to have a peer assessment, actually, so they can assess and evaluate their performance. And there is also part of the marking criteria. Difficult, difficult to, to determine because there are different experiences related with this type of assessment. Well, this is related with the, uh, the model that I teach. Uh, then I found that the, another article uh, which was based in a university, Curtin University in Australia, was for undergraduate level. And they used this software called uh, Symbol or Symbol, uh, which is simulation between learning. Uh, but here also prepare the students for a specific work routines in surveying. And interesting here in this simulation, they is complemented with peer assessment. And so other students also they have been aware uh, about the marking criteria and what does it mean the marking criteria in order to assess what determines a good piece of work and maybe a, a an assessment that uh, a course code that need to be improved. And the interesting in this paper, they mentioned some results of uh, the student voice. Uh, the feedback from the students said that 90.5% of the respondents agreed that the tool improved their accuracy in surveying. 92.8% agreed that the tool improved some uh, soft skills, some practical skills. Uh, such as problem solving, uh, problem solving, critical thinking, and communication. Well, uh, there was only just two particular results that I mentioned in this paper that I have read, but I thought it would be interesting actually to, to show to, to all of you uh, to see how uh, has been research simulation. Other papers only show, so far I have found it, show the practice of simulation. For example, in, in nursing or medicine, they have like a mannequin, and this mannequin uh, shows different type of um, symptoms of the human uh, human being. For example, the blood pressure, the heartbeat, and different ones. And each uh, uh, there is a group of students, and there is a link in this particular simulation with the role play, because in this group, each of these stu students have one particular role and at the end they determine and they uh, based on different indicators of the mannequins provides they provide a, a, a diagnosis to, to the patient um, but very interesting article but didn't provide any result from the feedback from the students but there was something that actually the, I would like to, to share to, with all of you but also, there are some questions that I'm still reflecting on based on the based on these different articles and based on my own personal experience. Again, is this question: What we are simulating it has been repeated in different papers about this, and we need to decide something that is not too complex and something that is not too easy for the students, and make this balance. I think is the the key challenge to incorporate simulation as an assessment in our modules. Other point is in which disciplines can be used, because it seems like in engineering, in nursing, in surveying, in business, but most of them are related with some part of science. What about only other type of uh, disciplines, such arts, such ethics? There was some information about this in some papers, but, but actually couldn't find more detail, actually. So maybe it also is related with, uh, we need more research on the effect of the simulations. More importantly, maybe we need to explore more about the, the pedagogy behind the simulation and how we can use it in, in our modules or our the disciplines that we're teaching. Uh, well, this other idea that I was thinking is, is more effective just on repetitive tasks if we have to improve in the case of the surveying, in the case of the nursing or medicine uh, simulation games. Uh, well, I think there are different examples. Maybe it's clear that in some disciplines have been used more than others. Seems like it's more uh, useful in, in, in disciplines related to science than in other ones. But that doesn't mean that we cannot use it in, in other ones. For me, it's very important that uh, it should be have a link with role play as well. In my previous experience with the simulation, we give to 
freedom to the students to decide how they're going to work within their own groups. Maybe if we tell them, we guide them uh, uh, so that they can divide the decisions. Some particular students are going to be focusing one particular type of cars or one particular decision, for example, engineering, marketing, HRR. No? And maybe there should be, again, like a balance, kind of, again, a negotiation between the students and the seminar leader in order to find a, a best solution for, for the students. Um, well, I think it's other important point, maybe not, maybe not related with the questions to reflect on, but I think simulation is a very powerful tool, but should be complemented to other assessments. Based on my experience in BG601, I think it was very interesting to link the simulation as a group assessment with assessment two, which was an individual report. And I think it was a very um, useful and a good way that the students actually can assess the performance as a group and also reflect all around their participation on, and the contribution during the group dynamics in the simulation. Well, I think that's, that's uh, all that I have, I would like to share with all of you. Uh, thank you very much again for watching and listening this uh, clip. Thank you.